board's sad, the mat board's sad, the basswood is very angry. And why? Because we love cardboard now. That's right, straight out of the recycle bin, off the floor of your garage, cardboard. Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ava, and if you've been following along with my videos lately, you will have seen that we have been making a cardboard house. That's right, this house is made from cardboard and things you can find around your house. I also recently made a cardboard couch and that was a huge hit. So in today's video, I am going to be making and sharing the pattern for several other pieces of living room furniture that you can use for your own project. If you would like to have these patterns for yourself, all you have to do is go down to the description box below this video, click on the links, and they will take you to the page where you can download the patterns for yourself. Big special thank you to Paula Storm, who has helped me take my hand-drawn patterns and put them into digital form. So everyone make sure to give her a big thank you in the comments because she really helped me out this week, especially since there are three patterns for you guys. One more thing before we get started on creating these pieces of furniture, I just want to make the distinction between cardboard and chipboard, and this will make it a lot easier to read my patterns. When I'm talking about cardboard, I'm talking about the stuff that's like shipping boxes and it has corrugation, it has the, um, the wavy part. And when I'm talking about chipboard, I am talking about a cereal box type material or soda box type material. And so it's much thinner and it doesn't have the corrugation on the inside. So I wanted to make sure and make that distinction before we got started with our furniture patterns. So without further ado, let's get started making some more cardboard furniture for our cardboard house. If you didn't see my video for the couch, I will put it up in the iCard now. I will be remaking it in this video because this one actually was stolen from me by a very cute member of my family. I will be remaking it. I won't show you the construction process because it is in that other video and you can check it out if you like to. However, I will make sure that the patterns are down below in this video if you want to grab the patterns from here. Start by showing you how to create an armchair that matches the same design as the couch I made previously. For this chair, you're going to need one of these pieces cut from a single layer of cardboard, one of these pieces cut from two layers of cardboard and they're glued together. You need the front legs, which are cut from two layers of chipboard. The back legs is also cut from two layers of chipboard. And the arm pieces that are going to be rolled up cut from a single layer of chipboard. I'm going to be using hot glue to put these together just because it's quick and fast and easy, but you can use just regular glue if that's what you would like. On the pattern, it says that this piece needs to make sure that the corrugation is running vertically. That is important because we are going to be scoring this piece of cardboard. Scoring means you just cut through one layer of the cardboard so that it bends easily. You want to make sure that the other layer, your blade does not go through it, otherwise your cardboard will start falling apart. The reason we're scoring it is so that it can easily bend around the base of the chair. Once I'm sure that the back of the chair is working with the base and it looks right, I'm going to go ahead and use some hot glue to put those two together. I'm also going to be using hot glue to reinforce some of these score marks that I made previously. All I'm going to do is put a little hot glue in the reveal and then use the nozzle of the glue gun to make sure that it's flat. And this will also help when uh, later on in the process when I put the mixture that hardens the cardboard, it helps um, that process go a little bit smoother. To add on the front legs of the chair, I am adding a thin line of hot glue and then I'm just going to line it up with the front of the seat. You can further support this on the back with a small square of cardboard if you would like to even though it's not in the pattern. For the back legs, I'm going to be bending these and this is kind of pre-bending it before I glue it on. It's always easier to get the correct bend in the cardboard before I glue it on and try and force it into that shape. And so once that's done, I'm going to add some glue in the center 
and then glue the center of the back legs first. I'm gonna let this dry so that I know I have it in the spot that I want it to be, and then I will add a little bit more glue to the sides and then hold those in place until the glue is set. Now I have a chair that can sit up on its own. If you would like to, at this point, you can kind of bend the feet out to give it a little bit more character, but I will say the legs of these chairs are starting to give me like penguin pants visions like Mary Poppins. Anyway, I'll, anyway, moving on. I'll probably come up with a different design for the legs for the next set, just so you have an option for your legs if you don't like this design. The arms for the armchairs are going to be done the same way as the couch, where I am pre-bending the chipboard and then I'm going to use a pencil to start rolling it and then take the pencil out and then roll it as tight as I can, adding some hot glue to the end to make sure it stays in place. Once I have it rolled up to the correct length, then I'm just going to add it onto the edge of the chair, making sure that the roll sticks out on the outside, creating the arm. These are really easy to create and I think they look pretty nice on the chair. You'll have to do this two times so that you have two arms per chair. And here's the support piece that I was talking about earlier if you want to add that. You will notice that there are also two other pieces on your pattern. These are for the upholstery, which I will be doing later on. They will eventually sit like this, so just save those for later if you already cut them out. I've decided to make two of these armchairs for my living room. Honestly, it's easier to make two at a time than to make an entire one and then go back and make another one. So I'm gonna have two chairs to go along with my couch. But now we have something missing in the center. So let's move on to our next piece, which is going to be the coffee table. This one's actually a pretty quick and easy build with just a few pieces. You're gonna need this piece made of two layers of cardboard. Two of these pieces, each made from a single layer of chipboard. You need two sets of legs, both made from a double layer of chipboard. And then this is going to be either one long piece of quarter inch long single layer chipboard, or you can cut out two layers. You're just going to have to join them together later. So really you just need one long one or two medium size ones. To start, I'm going to take this smaller shape and add glue. This is actually a little easier done with tacky glue than with hot glue, but I just kind of went with the hot glue. I'm going to center it and glue it onto my two layers of cardboard, and then I'm going to glue this other one on the other side. So I'm kind of sandwiching the larger piece in between the two smaller pieces. The reason I mentioned this is easier to do with tacky glue is because this one that you see right now I actually got off center because the hot glue grabs hold a lot faster than tacky glue. I'm going to now take my very long strip of quarter inch long chipboard and it is going to be pushed up against the edge of the smaller piece that I glued onto the cardboard pieces. This is just giving me kind of a lip to glue this piece onto. And this is why it's okay if you have a couple pieces that you're gluing together to get this length because you can actually just use a little bit of hot glue to join it together once you have it wrapping all the way around the bottom. This is going to help us place our legs on the bottom of the table. Once I'm ready for the legs, I'm just going to give them a little bit of a pre-bend and then I'm going to add glue and then glue them just on the inside, on the shorter side of underneath the coffee table. <laughs> that got confusing, but as you can see, just glue it on the inside of the borders that we previously created. And that's basically it for the coffee table. Really super simple. So now that we have all these pieces created, I think we can make one more thing to finish this set, a bookcase. For this piece, you'll need this large single piece of cardboard. You'll need this smaller front piece. This is gonna be the front part of the bookcase. You'll need this piece, which is a single piece of chipboard, and both of these, which are going to be your fake drawer fronts made from a single piece of chipboard. You're also going to need several strips of cardboard that are an inch wide and some of them need to have the corrugation running horizontally 
and then the other pieces need to have the corrugation running vertically. These are going to serve different purposes. And so on your pattern where you see the jagged edge, it just means you're going to need a quite a bit amount that wouldn't have fit on the pattern page. So just cut a few strips of those. To begin, you're going to grab one of the inch wide pieces with the corrugation running uh, the lengthwise and you're just going to set it on top of the back piece and this is going to be all just kind of marking and measuring. There's a lot of this pattern where you just kind of have to use a pencil and figure out what's going to work the best for your bookcase. My pattern kind of gives you a starting point but then you can kind of um, add and use it how you want to. Once I have a piece that fits along the bottom, this is actually going to be the bottom baseboard of this cabinet, um, I'm going to glue that on to the back. Then I'm going to grab a different piece of cardboard. It is an inch thick and it has the corrugation running width wise. Now I'm going to score this piece. And again, scoring means that I'm only cutting through one layer of the cardboard, and this is going to cause this piece to be very able to bend back and forth. Because our bookcase is very rounded and ornate, this is going to be very helpful. I'm going to start at one end where I previously glued my piece of cardboard, and I'm going to start basically outlining the back of the bookcase with this bendy piece of cardboard. This is going to create the side and the top of the bookcase. I'm just going to go slow, add hot glue as I go, and make sure that I'm happy with it lining up with the edge. The better you can get it lined up with the edge, the less work you'll have to do with the joint compound that we will get to in a few minutes. Again, this pattern is just kind of a base point, so if you want the top of your bookcase to have a different design, you want it pointy instead of rounded, you can just create that pattern and then use the same technique of making the bendable cardboard go around the edge and just go around your pattern instead of mine. So you can kind of bend this and shape this to be what you want. So as you saw, I did not have enough of that one inch length of cardboard to go around. So I'm just adding an extra piece with a little bit of glue and then continuing on. I wanna do the same technique I did with the chair where I'm putting a little bit of hot glue inside of the places where I scored it. And then I'm using the nozzle to flatten it out. This again will help strengthen this area and make it easier to add the joint compound on later. Now I can add on the front of the cabinet and I'm going to set the cabinet on my work surface to make sure that the feet are all lining up correctly. Then I'm going to hold the front piece in place while I add glue on either side. I wanna make sure that it stays where I want it to so that the bookcase stands up correctly. I'm flattening out the glue so that it's as close to the edge as possible. Now I'm taking another piece of cardboard with the corrugation running lengthwise, and this is going to be inset into the bookcase to make a top of, to make like a countertop on top of this bottom part. So once I have that marked out, I'm gonna cut it and then fit it to make sure that it fits correctly inside the bookcase. Now I'm just gonna take a little hot glue and glue that guy in place, making sure that I flatten out the glue as I go. Now it's time to add in the shelves. And again, this is where you can really make this your pattern. You can put as many shelves in as you want. You can leave it open with no shelves if you wanna put something big inside this cabinet. I'm gonna be adding two shelves, and this is why your pattern doesn't have specific shelf sizes. You just wanna take one of the cardboard pieces with the corrugation running lengthwise and measure it kind of figure out where you want your shelf to be. And this could also depend on how you did the corrugation that runs around the outside of the bookcase. So for me to put on the pattern, your shelf needs to be exactly this long. It could mess you guys up. So measure that and stick that in there um, for what works best for you. Then I added a little hot glue on the top and the bottom of the shelf on the back, and this will just keep it from warping when we add the joint compound later. 
To finish off the top of the cabinet, I'm going to be adding this piece of chipboard. And if it doesn't exactly line up with my cardboard corrugation that runs around the top of the bookcase, that is okay because I can kind of fix that with the joint compound later on. So I'm gluing that on, trying to make sure it fits as best as possible, but I'm not worrying about it too much. Now I'm adding on the drawer fronts and this again might be easier with tacky glue because that hot glue takes hold really, really fast and I didn't get the drawer in the right place the first time, I had to pull it off. The rectangle drawer goes on top and then the drawer that has a slight arch in it goes on the bottom to kind of mimic the arch that's in the bottom of the bookcase. And this is the bookcase put together. I'm just double checking that it stands up and it does. And here are our living room pieces. Once these are done, I want to cover up the corrugation that is showing from the cardboard. Now, if you like the corrugation and you like the pattern, you can leave it. I actually wanna cover it up and then also fill in the holes that were created by the arms of the chairs and the couch. So to do this, I am going to be using all-purpose joint compound. This is the brand that I am using. I actually had to get another bucket of it because you guys want me to keep going and so we're keeping we're just, we're keeping going. <laughs> I'm using a small sculpting tool to get a little bit of the joint compound and then I am just going to be going over the areas that I want to smooth out and make flat. So this is anywhere that the corrugation is showing, it's anywhere that I have scores that I created with my knife so that the cardboard would bend for me, and also anywhere where two joints meet and I feel like they just need a little bit more smoothing. So actually the bookcase ends up having quite a bit of joint compound on it because the entire side and top are scored and then the backs of the chairs and the couch end up having a lot of joint compound um, but I really do find that it gives everything a really nice finished look. Here are the pieces with the joint compound added and um, I also made sure to fill in those holes on the arms. You can leave them open if you want to. I wanted mine to look solid, so I made sure to fill them in. I don't feel like the joint compound on the side of the bookcase gets rid of the score pattern completely, but it does help quite a bit. And here's the couch, even though I showed, I had a whole nother video on the couch, but I wanted to show you I'm working on it all at the same time. After adding the joint compound, I want to make sure and sand it all down. The joint compound sands really easily. It does make a lot of dust, so make sure that you protect um, your mouth and your <laughs> nose and wear a mask. Uh, but this does create a much smoother effect before we go on to the next step. This will also give you time to realize if there's any places that you missed. So for the next step, we are going to be creating the mixture that I showed you in the original house videos and the couch video. It is going to be one-to-one -one mixture of the joint compound I was using and Elmer's glue. It can be the school glue kind or not. I know some other people were trying some different kinds of glue. This is what I have found works for me, so I'm going to keep going with it. But I mix them in equal parts, and then I just stir them together until I feel like they are thoroughly mixed. I had a few people in previous comments tell me to try and use a paintbrush for this. I was using a mixing palette. Uh, like a palette knife, that's what it's called, to slather this on to the cardboard, but um, I was told to try a paintbrush. So I did want to give this a go, and I will tell you, I did find that everything came out so much smoother than it did previously. So if you want a really chunky, rocky texture, um, I think go with the palette knife that I was using before and just kind of slather it on. But if you want something really smooth and refined, using a paintbrush is a really good way to go. And I was worried that it was going to ruin the paintbrush, but as long as I stuck it in water while things were drying, I really didn't have any problems because the water kept the bristles wet and so the compound mixture didn't dry on my brush. 
I did find that using the paintbrush made my application a lot thinner than it did previously with a palette knife, and so I do two coats of the joint compound glue mixture on each piece. I felt like one coat was a little bit too thin to give it the rigidity that I really wanted, and so after two coats, this is what it is looking like, and I'm very happy with it. I do end up sanding after this, but honestly, I don't know if it really helped that much because it was already so smooth from using the paintbrush application technique. After sanding, pretty much it's ready to paint. I will just note that if you do sand and you're going to start painting, make sure and try and get all of the dust off first. Just like I did in the couch video, I am going to be using some punches to add a little bit of decoration to my pieces before I paint. I'm using some old business cards. Business cards are great because they're like double the thickness of cardstock and usually you get like a thousand and if you don't need them, then like you don't need them. <laughs> So I cut out some business cards with a punch with different leaf shapes and I think there's like an acorn shape in there as well And then I'm going over it with some tacky glue I'm gonna smooth it down with my finger because I feel like this better incorporates it into The actual structure of the couch and so it's not just a stark transition from a flat piece of paper To the furniture the glue helps it kind of blend in a little bit better I decided that I wanted a dark wood look for these pieces of furniture, so I'm starting with a base coat of black. This will help my brown colors get a lot darker faster if I do this base coat. I'm going to cover everything with black and then let that dry. Actually, I don't quite let it dry. You can see there's still going to be black paint all over my fingers. Then I apply the next coat, which is going to be brown, and as you can see, it does end up looking pretty dark. And I think for some reason, this whole fairy tale, foresty type um, idea behind this project um, really makes me think of dark, dark wood furniture. Now I'm going over with a dry brush technique, and this is with a lighter brown. This is going to bring out the pieces that we took so much time punching out and gluing on, the edge of the paint are, is going to catch these little bitty details and it's really gonna to start to bring them out. You can see it on the coffee table and then on the chair, it will just help those pop out and really catch your eye. It gives a lot of interest and detail to these fairly simple little furniture pieces. We did a similar technique with the original couch. We painted it a cream and then I dry brushed gray on top. So really you can do this with any paint. Um, just, you know, play around with it, see what you think. And as you can see, I really think it adds so much when you start dry brushing because it just, everything, it just pops out so much more. Also, if you look at the back, mistakes pop out a little bit more too. So you can kind of pick and choose where you want to dry brush and what parts you want to highlight on your pieces. I do this same technique for each and every piece because I want them to look like a set. And at this point, this is what they are looking like. Now three of these pieces need upholstery and so I'm going to grab those guys. The bookcase and the uh, coffee table are done, so yay for that. As I said earlier, these two pieces are going to be what you need to upholster the chair. I'm not gonna show you the couch because that's in a previous video, but I am gonna show you how to upholster this little chair. I went back and looked in my fabric collection and I decided to go with something lighter so it would really contrast with the dark wood of the dark wood look of the furniture. It's not wood, it's cardboard. And um, I also found this kind of complimentary, I don't know if it's complimentary, it's kind of in the similar genre type uh, fabric for the couch and so I thought it'd be fun to kind of mix and match those. If you've seen any of my upholstery videos before, you will know that I like to use quilt batting, but I did have a suggestion for some other ideas of some household items you could use. So I figured let's try them out in this video to see if it's possible to use. And I actually only tried one in this video. As we move along, I might try some other ideas, but these are cotton balls. And I don't know if you knew this, but cotton balls, you can unroll them 
and then I decided once I did that I could maybe glue them on in layers similar to the way I do with the quilt batting. I'm going to add some tacky glue to the top of my upholstery shape. This is going to be the seat of the chair. This is going to grab onto the cotton ball as I lay it down. And I don't know why I laid it in the center. I could have laid it at the end to get a little bit more use out of this cotton ball. But I'm just going to line them up and try and make sure that um, there's not like a dip or a gap in the center where the two pieces meet. Then I'm going to take some sharp scissors, go around and cut off any of the excess. And this is going to be one layer of the upholstery um, filling, filler, the, the upholstery stuffing. Once that's chopped off, I'm going to add just a few dabs. I don't want to add a lot because I don't want it to like dry and be lumpy. I just want enough so that it will grab onto the next layer. And I don't know if this was helpful, but I kind of crisscrossed the way that the cotton was laying. And so I put that next layer on and then flipped it over and cut off the excess again. Once that was done, I'm going to flip it upside down on my fabric so that the right side is the right side of the fabric is facing down. And then I'm just going to upholster my seat like I usually do, which is not that great. I'm not the best upholsterer when it comes to um, making the fabric look good, but I will tell you how I do it. I kind of go with the flat surfaces first and then I fold over the back. Then I use some fabric scissors to cut off any excess that's going to make it extremely bulky. Now I can slowly go around the curves, grabbing each piece of fabric and pulling it as tight as I can without bending the chipboard piece that is holding the upholstery together. Then I just add glue and glue the pieces down as I go. I do that for both sides and then my chair seat is finished. It may not look perfect, like I said, I'm not the best at upholstery, but I think it does the trick enough to get by. And honestly, I don't think the cotton swabs did too bad. I mean, it's a squishy cushion and yeah, it worked pretty well. I'm gonna do the same thing for the back upholstery piece. I'm just going to line up the cotton and then cut it off and then do the same thing, but with the cotton going the opposite way and then cut it off again until I have a cotton upholstered piece. It does end up a little bit lumpy. I don't know if I just put too much cotton in one area, but um, once it's upholstered, you can't really tell. For this piece, I'm going to start upholstering it by folding over the bottom part because that is the only flat part on this piece of chipboard. I'm going to fold that over and then I'm going to do the same process of cutting away any excess fabric. I'm leaving about a half inch of fabric all the way around. And then I'm going to snip into the fabric, leaving about an eighth inch away from the side of the upholstery and then I'm just going to go slowly pulling each individual tab into some glue that I put on the back and this is slowly going to form the cushion to the shape that I want it to be. This isn't like I said the most perfect way to do this but when the form is really irregular um, I think this is the best way to do it in miniature in my opinion but if y'all do it a different way let me know in the comments and now this piece fits just like this on the back of the chair all you have to do to add these pieces permanently is add a little bit of glue to the back of the piece and then hold them onto your chair base until it takes hold and this is how the pieces look all upholstered and ready to go. Now we have our set, except I forgot the bookcase um, needed some handles for the drawers. I have another video where I show you how to make different types of handles. And from that video, I still have these stud earrings. And so in the spirit of using what you have, which is the whole idea behind this series, I'm just going to use some of these old earring studs to create faux handles for our fake drawers. I'm using a little hand drill to drill in and then I'm making sure that the stud fits into the hole. Now I can just use a little bit of super glue on this 
the stem of the stud earring and I did learn don't use super glue over your finished item in case it drips. Do it off to the side. Um, and then I put it back in the hole making sure that it's pulled out to the distance that I like. And there we go, we've got some handles for the drawers. The stars don't really match the theme of the leaves, but I think it's okay. And I'm also going to age up the handles a little bit to match the feeling of the furniture. I'm just using some watered down acrylic paint to add on top of the shiny handles. And I figured these earring backs could make something else cool later on, so I'm keeping those. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you really enjoyed it. One thing I have enjoyed recently is seeing you guys' builds on Instagram and Facebook. So many people have really been enjoying the idea of building with cardboard. I've seen people working on houses. I've seen people coming out with the cardboard couch. And honestly, it has been making my day. So if you do participate in any of these cardboard builds, please be sure to tag me on Instagram or you can also post on my Facebook page and that's how I get to see what you guys are working on. I am so excited to continue with this build and to continue making fun, easy to make furniture patterns for you guys. I think my next room I will be working on is the bedroom, so of course we'll need a bed, but please let me know down in the description anything else you think of because your ideas often help me out when I get into a creative rut. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and also share it around. If you think there's someone who would love building a cardboard house, send them a quick email with the link and let them join in on the fun too. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. We have to show them that we match. How do I show them? Come here. We match. We both are wearing pink. Did it make it good? You don't care? I shouldn't care. Oh, thank you.